Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than the ones that I normally post here on my channel. It's actually a case of a kidnapping where the person that was kidnapped was actually returned to their parents, but the way it all kind of went down really surprised me. So it is kind of nice to be talking about a story that has a relatively happy ending, but there are a lot of things in this case that I just was not expecting to happen the way that they did. But with that being said, let's just get right into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the case of Kamaya Mobley. Kamaya Mobley was born July 10th, 1998 to her mother, Shinara Mobley, who was only 16 years old at the time. She was born at 6.55 a.m. at the University Medical Center in Jacksonville, Florida, but immediately after Kamaya was brought into this world, tragedy struck. It had only been eight hours since Shannara had given birth. Now, a nurse had been particularly interested in helping Shannara and her baby that entire morning after she was born. This nurse had spent several hours in her room striking up conversation and just sort of building a rapport with her. She even helped Shannara get out of bed and walked her down the hall to get cleaned up and get into a new gown. At 3 p.m., Shannara was absolutely exhausted and asked this nurse to put Kamaya into her baby carrier, which she did. But the nurse informed her that she would need to take Kamaya soon, just into another room to go ahead and check her temperature, which was pretty standard for newborns. The nurse picked up the baby, but just as she was about to leave, Kamaya's parental grandmother walked in. The nurse explained to her that they needed to get this quick temperature check and it wouldn't take more than 15 minutes, but the grandmother was just so excited to see her new grandbaby and said, I need to see my grandbaby. So the nurse moved Kamaya's little white blanket and revealed the adorable baby that was hidden inside. Then the nurse left the room with Kamaya in her arms. Of course, being a nurse, nothing seemed too out of the ordinary. However, when Kamaya still hadn't returned 20 minutes later, this is when Shannara realized that something was terribly wrong. She started absolutely panicking and she was crawling on the floor trying to pick herself up and starting running down the hallway to chase after her baby. The police shortly received a phone call from the hospital reporting an abduction. Police showed up to speak to Shannara about what happened and this is when she told detectives that this nurse came into her room. She was wearing a blue smock with flowers on it, green scrubs, and wearing surgical gloves. She came into her room, but then just walked out with her baby and never returned. When they saw this woman on surveillance video, hospital staff said that they had seen this woman, but they originally thought that it was just a family member. So when they saw her walking out of the room with the baby, they didn't think anything of it. But there was a missing infant. Police sealed the hospital. They stopped every visitor from coming in and out. They stopped buses from leaving and alerted the airport police to be on lockdown for a baby. Every train leaving Jacksonville was searched row by row. Every room in the hospital was scoured from top to bottom and they had helicopters flying from above. But at this point, they could not find anything. Police put out a description of this woman describing her as being 30 to 35 years old, possibly wearing a wig that had dark brown shoulder length hair that was curled at the bottom. She was an African American woman standing at about five feet five inches tall, weighing about 150 to 160 pounds and wore reading glasses. They initially believed that this probably was a woman who had just lost her child or had maybe been faking a pregnancy, so to keep on the lookout for a woman with histories relating to that. They started following up on numerous leads that they had received, but also asked for the public's help in searching for this stolen infant. But even though they couldn't find anything and they were met with so many roadblocks, Detectives were very confident that they would find this baby. A detective said that there was a very high percentage of getting the babies back in cases like this. But days passed and the family was left wondering what happened. Was she still alive? Was she okay? Where was she? 
And who was this woman who just snatched her? She was taken so early after she was born that they hadn't even taken a picture of her yet. So they had to come up with a composite sketch of what she probably would have looked like so that people could keep an eye out for her and know what she probably looked like. Now, Kamaya's father is a man named Craig Aiken. He was actually in jail at the time that Kamaya was born and went missing because at the time of her conception, Shannara was only 15 years old and he was 19 years old. So he had been charged with lewd and indecent assault on a child. Now, I don't know a lot about Craig or their relationship at the time, but obviously this is a very big age gap and he was a legal adult and she was not. So he probably should have been in jail, but either way, this was his child and he still wanted to know what happened. He was frustrated that he was in jail and wasn't able to help with the searches and never even got to see his child before she was taken. He wondered where she was and what happened to her just as much as Shannara did. Now, as the days passed and there was still no sign of Kamaya, police began to suspect that maybe Shannara had something to do with her newborn's disappearance. I mean, she was only 16 years old and it was her first child, plus the father was in jail and wasn't available to help out with the baby. Police started putting pressure on Craig to figure out if he knew anything about Shannara that would lead them to believe that she's the one who did this to her child. But he said no, that she was just as eager as him to have Kamaya, so there's no way that she would have wanted to just get rid of her. Then police started to wonder if maybe Craig was the one who set this all up, or maybe the two had worked together to get rid of this baby. Police started putting pressure on Shamara, and eventually many people started to believe that maybe she sold her baby gave her baby away or did whatever else to her. But Shamara said in a quote, everybody was saying I sold the baby, gave the baby away. Come on now, if I thought it was going to be this hard, I could have gotten abortion. I still could be running the streets. I could have been doing drugs, drinking all that. I chose to do right to have a beautiful baby. At one point, Shannara even started turning on her own mother, accusing her of being responsible. She looked at Craig's mother, who was there when this all happened. Of course, she felt incredibly guilty for not doing anything or realizing what was happening sooner, but she said that she was not responsible. It was just so hard to not want to point fingers in every direction, especially when police and the public were looking directly at her. But even with police looking into all of these different scenarios, searching the areas up and down, interviewing numerous people, putting out flyers with Kamaya's face on them and the description of the suspect, and putting out a $250,000 reward for her return, they found absolutely nothing. Weeks started to pass and weeks quickly turned into months and months into years. No one was able to find this sweet baby that had just been ripped out of her mother's arms hours after she was born. Shannara had spent her time babysitting her friend's children and praying that her baby is okay. She said that every single day that passed hurt just as much as the day that Kamaya was taken. But she said that she was never going to give up hope. She just knew she felt that her baby was going to come home someday. As the years passed, she did have four other children who she absolutely loved and adored. And then every single year on Kamaya's birthday, Shannara threw a party. She bought a cake and stored it in the freezer every single year, hoping that when Kamaya one day returned, she could show her daughter this cake to show her how much she loved her and how much she never stopped looking for her. Now, in 2000, Shannara had actually filed a lawsuit against the University Medical Center for allowing this to even happen. After the fact, they did beef up security. They put new measures in place and even put ankle monitors on every new baby that would go off even if they were cut or if the baby was taken out of the hospital, but it was too late for Shannara. She already lost her baby, so she was actually awarded $1.5 million after settling the lawsuit. But again, nothing could stop the pain that she was feeling every single day of her life. Shannara didn't find out what happened to her sweet baby until almost two decades later in 2017. An 18-year-old teenager from Waterboro, South Carolina actually discovered that the woman that she had been raised by 
wasn't actually her mother. This young woman's name was Alexis Manigo. When Alexis turned 16, she actually landed her first job, but in order to actually go to work, she needed a valid license and her social security number, both of which she did not have. This is when her mother, Gloria Williams, admitted to her that she wasn't actually really her daughter. She had told Alexis that she took her from the hospital the day that she was born and raised her as her own. Gloria offered to turn herself into police for what she had done. Of course, this absolutely shocked and horrified Alexis, but she didn't want her mother to turn herself in. She told her mother to just run and that she could just live under the radar and that nobody had to find out, but Gloria said that she couldn't do that. She said that she just couldn't leave Alexis. She did not know what she was gonna do without her. Alexis did not go to police, and in fact, Alexis only shared the secret with one close friend. However, about a year and a half after all of this, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children received an anonymous tip about Kamaya's status, and the authorities were notified. At 4.50 a.m., police showed up to Gloria's house to arrest her with Alexis screaming and crying to get her back. They had Alexis take DNA tests soon after and sure enough, Alexis Manigo was Kamaya Mobley, the baby who had been snatched out of her mother's arms 18 years earlier. Now, Kamaya had been raised by a loving mother alongside her two siblings in a very close-knit family her entire life in Waterboro, South Carolina. One of her neighbors described her as your very typical young woman. She grew up going to her big brother's basketball games. She did well in school and went to church on Sundays. Her and Gloria, who she believed was her mother her whole life, were also extremely close. The two would always go out and get their nails done together and Gloria provided Alexa with everything she could ever want and need in life. But Gloria Williams did commit a pretty nasty crime, so she had to pay for what she had done. It was at this point that authorities decided to reunite Alexis or Kamaya with her birth family. Shannara learned that her daughter was alive on January 13th, 2017 after being told by police that they had a lead in this case. She said that this feeling was absolutely unimaginable and felt like she had given birth all over again. She said that it was one of the happiest days in her life. Kamaya met her parents for the first time over FaceTime and they were so impressed with the beautiful and smart young woman that she had grown into. They said that the FaceTime wasn't too long, but she had acted like they weren't even strangers that she was talking to. She spoke to them like she had known them for a very long time. But then Shinara learned that Kamaya did not alert authorities when she found out that she was a child that had been abducted from Jacksonville. She was pretty disappointed, but she was willing to look past it. She thought that they were going to be this big, happy family that was reunited once again. But then Mother's Day came and went without Kamaya saying a word to her. Kamaya still wanted to go by the name Alexis. She didn't want Gloria to receive a long prison sentence. As far as she knew, Gloria was actually her mother and Shannara and Craig were strangers. This was like yet another blow to this whole situation that was already so devastating. Now, let's sort of talk about what was going on in Gloria's life at the time that this all happened and what caused her to take such great lengths to get to this other woman's baby. So at the time, Gloria had actually been pregnant, but she went through a miscarriage. That's how she was able to take Kamaya without her family being suspicious because she didn't tell anyone about her miscarriage and her body continued to show symptoms of a phantom pregnancy such as her swollen belly and breasts. Gloria said that she felt immense pressure from her boyfriend to go ahead and have a baby. Her boyfriend at the time, Charles Manigo, was incredibly physically abusive towards her and she thinks that this abuse is actually what caused her miscarriage. It got to the point where Gloria's two sons from her previous marriage had actually been taken away to live with their father due to them being deemed unsafe to live in that household with all of the abuse. She said that Charles wanted her to have a baby so that their relationship would become more stable and she so badly wanted to believe that. So because of this, she said that she just 
basically went on autopilot and just started driving. She drove four hours before arriving at the hospital and she started looking at infants in the nursing ward and eventually wandered into Shannara's room. Shannara had opened up to her about how she didn't know what she was going to do with her child. She said that she knew it wasn't logical, but she thought that maybe bringing this baby home was going to help her relationship with Charles. So she decided to change into that blue floral smock and those green scrubs and return to her room carrying a bag. She took Kamaya out of the room, put her in the bag, and just left. Of course, she said that as she was walking out, she was totally panicked. She knew that someone could see something. Someone could just stop her and ask her what's in the bag, but she got away. She brought that baby home. Gloria's parents actually lived across the street from her, so when she brought the baby home, the parents were like, uh, what's that? And she just said, it's my baby. She told her parents that her labor had actually started while she was at work, an 80 minute drive away in Charleston. She said that she had to rush to the ER where she gave birth very quickly. Now, she had been gone all night, so it was a little bit strange that she hadn't called and told anyone, but it wasn't totally impossible. I mean, she was pregnant and she had come home with a baby. No one's going to question that. She came up with fraudulent records for Lexus and lived with her like that for the next 18 years of her life. Ultimately, bringing this baby home is what led to Gloria actually leaving her abusive relationship. As you can imagine, bringing a baby into the mix did not make anything better and Gloria did not want her baby to go through that. The baby is what encouraged her to escape the abuse. She got her life together. She got remarried to a very loving and stable husband and gained back the custody of her two other children. Now in February of 2018, the trial began and Gloria had pleaded guilty to kidnapping and interfering with state custody in return for a plea deal limiting her to a maximum punishment of 22 years instead of possibly facing life in prison. Shannara and Craig sat right in the front, right behind the prosecutor's table with Kamaya sitting away in the back by herself, supporting neither the prosecution or the defense. The trial was full of tears and broken hearts. It was understandably incredibly difficult for everyone involved. Kamaya had originally planned to testify, but ultimately decided not to. Of course, this was a lose-lose situation. She understood and appreciated the fact that Shannara was her birth mother. She had other biological siblings that she hadn't even known about. She wanted to love her biological mother, but she was raised by Gloria and she loved Gloria. And to her, Gloria was her mother, not Shannara. Gloria gave her a wonderful life, raised her well, and by some accounts, even spoiled her. She wanted Gloria released with time served, and she didn't want her to face a long sentence. But Craig and Shannara felt very differently. They wanted Gloria to pay for ripping their family apart. They wanted Gloria to suffer just like they had suffered for so many years. When asked what punishment Gloria should receive, Shannara responded, death. As Shannara testified, she sobbed and sobbed and was just inconsolable. Through all of the pain, she managed to tell the court that despite being a teenager when she was pregnant, she felt very happy. She was excited. She felt hope. She said, quote, I was real happy because I had been through so much in my life and now I was having a baby. Everything seemed right. Everything seemed right. Like God was giving me another chance to straighten up and I had a reason to. When Craig testified, he recounted the pain that he had felt for the past 20 years of having a baby and never even getting the opportunity to see her face. When speaking about the day that Kamaya was taken 20 years ago, he said, quote, that seems like a long time for some people, but I remember it like it was yesterday, and I still feel like it was yesterday. I know she remembers because it was also the day that she kidnapped my daughter, and ever since that day, she has destroyed many, many lives for her own selfish reasons. He said that over the past decades, he had just hoped that he would turn out to be this superhero who could swoop in and save her daughter. He said that he never imagined the day that he would be sitting face to face with the woman 
who took his daughter in court. He turned to Gloria and said, you gotta pay for what you did. Craig and Shannara were hurt. Even after Gloria was arrested, her and Kamaya stayed in touch. They spoke on the phone all the time and wrote letters back and forth. Even though Kamaya was getting to know her biological parents, her siblings, her grandparents, aunts, and uncles, and she loved them, she continued communicating with Gloria. Shannara was hurt that the name listed under the contact mommy in her phone was not her number, but Gloria's phone number. Craig and Shannara were taunted by the fact that there was this woman who stole their child and that Kamaya, their daughter, would not let her go. In court, Shannara accused Gloria of manipulating Kamaya. She looked Gloria up and down and told her to leave, to just leave them alone. She looked at Kamaya and yelled, I am your mother, Kamaya. I am your mother. She said to the judge, quote, I need her to get away from my child. I wish you could do a no contact order too, because if me and my child's relationship can get along, I need her away, far away, where she cannot contact my baby and where my baby can't get to her. Then finally, Gloria took the stand. She had told the story of what drove her to kidnapping Kamaya. She had testified for two hours, eventually turning to Shannara and Craig to address the people that she had wronged. She said, quote, I really just cannot tell you what was on my mind in my head back then. I was a different person. My head was in a different place. I was just broken. I had a broken heart. I had a broken spirit. She knew that what she did didn't make any sense. She knew that she should have just left her abusive boyfriend instead of coming to him with this baby to try and fix their relationship. She turned to them again and said, I know I wronged you and I'm sorry. So many days, so many days, so many days. I just wanted to pick up that child and say, come on, let's get in this car and go. I just couldn't. When I left Jacksonville, I didn't look back. I didn't know what you went through. She said that she never meant to hurt them, but she knows that she did and she was sorry. She also started referring to her as Kamaya, not Alexis. She said to her, I will always love you, always. The joy that you brought me. I thank God that the world can't take it away from me but you're not mine. Your mother and your father are sitting right here. At the end of it all, Gloria was sentenced to 18 years in prison. At this point, Kamaya had been through so much. She had her entire world rocked, and you can't blame her for being upset that the woman who raised her went to jail. You can't blame her for being resistant to just letting herself love this new woman who was a complete stranger to her. And you can't blame Shannara for being very upset and confused for why the daughter that she gave birth to wasn't just accepting of her and loving of her. Kamaya went back to Walterboro and went back to the little white house that she was raised in, and she did live there for a while, until December of 2018, when she actually decided to move down to Jacksonville, Florida to live with her biological family, and they could not be happier. Her father posted this picture to Facebook to announce the move and to ask for everyone's support as she made this huge step in her life. But of course, this all still remains to be such a huge strain on everyone's life involved. Shannara and Kamaya did not speak for a while, and Shannara had said that she feels like she has to compete with her daughter's kidnapper for her love. There was one point that Shannara even said that maybe the two shouldn't have ever been reunited because this is just causing so much more heartbreak. Kamaya still wants to love Gloria, and she kept her name saved as Mommy. She needs her parents to be okay with the fact that Gloria raised her and that she will always love her. But hopefully, given the fact that she has moved to Florida to be with them, their relationship will get a lot better. When she was 21 years old, Kamaya finally ended up landing a job, which is something that she had wanted to do since she was 16. She was finally able to get a new legal government ID and she got her driver's license. She still visits Gloria in prison, but when she got her ID and had to pick a legal name, she actually picked the name Kamaya Mobley. So that is all I have for today's video. I know that this was a little bit different than what I normally post here on my channel, but despite all of the trauma and grief that this entire situation caused, it's nice to see a happy ending in one of these types of stories. She had a happy childhood. She wasn't physically harmed. She will have a lot of psychological and mental things to work through, but 
for someone who is kidnapped. I'm happy that it ended with her being found alive and well. I just thought that this case was so incredibly interesting and I can't even imagine what she went through. She seems to be adjusting to everything incredibly well and she seems to be doing very well in life. Hopefully after everything is settled, she comes out even stronger than she ever was before. But either way, that is where I'm going to end today's video. If you like this video, please make sure to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye. <laughs>